Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today we're unrolling cloth dynamically in Cinema 4D. This tutorial was brought to you by CG Shortcuts Pro Membership, where members get access to Cinema 4D, Octane and Redshift courses, project files, models, materials, discounts, and even a private Facebook group, as well as lots more. Become a member today and take your Cinema 4D skills to the next level. Visit cgshortcuts.com forward slash membership. Now let's get back to the tutorial. So I've got a plane and a cylinder in my scene here. And the idea is to have a rolled up bit of cloth over here, which unfurls, bounces over the cylinder and fully unrolls over here. So let's start by setting up our cloth. We'll hide these for now. And you could use another plane for your cloth, but I'm going to be a bit fancy and start with a rectangle instead. And we'll need to change the orientation of that so it points along the direction of our floor. So we'll switch to the XZ direction and we'll make our strip of cloth 50 centimeters wide and 500 centimeters long. And the reason why I went with a rectangle instead of a plane is because the rectangle also has this rounding option, which if we enable, will round off those corners which is a bit more interesting than the pointy edges a plane gives us. But let's just reduce the amount of rounding to eight centimeters. Okay, so that's the outline of our cloth. So we now need to turn this into geometry. We'll hit Shift C to bring up the commander and we'll add an extrude. Holding Alt when we click that to apply it to our rectangle. So now we've got a 3D object from that, but I don't wanna add thickness at this stage. So let's drop the offset of the extrude down to zero which now gives us something very close to what we would have had with a plane. And we've got those nice round edges. So we need to subdivide this because we'll need a load of polygons in here so we can curl it up and deform it. So for that, let's use a remesh. Again, holding Alt when we click on that. So it's applied to the top of our hierarchy. But that's not quite giving us the mesh we want because if we look at our remesh settings, by default, we're set to mesh density mode, which is set to 100% which means it's going to try and give us evenly distributed polygons with the same amount of faces the object already had. But it only had one face before, which is why it's messed the shape up. So all we need to do is change the mode to polygon count instead, which defaults to 2000 polygons, which is plenty enough to give us a nice even remesh. And because the shape should be symmetrical along the X and Z axis, we can also enable symmetry on those. So we now have a very nicely subdivided mesh, which is perfect for deforming and simulating. So let's deform it first. I wanna roll this up like carpet. So let's use a bend deformer for that. And this time we'll hold shift when we bring this in so that it's added below the remesh in our hierarchy. And doing that also makes our bend deformer fit to the parent shape. So it's encompassing the mesh perfectly like so. So let's add some strength to our bend and see if it's bending in the direction we want. Nope, it seems to be trying to bend side to side. So we might need to change the orientation to positive Z instead and refit that to the parent object. And I think that's now pointed in the right direction. Let's bend this and see. Almost, we're bending this in the right direction, just on the wrong angle. We need it going up and down instead. So we can just change the angle to 90 degrees. And we've now finally got it bending in the right direction. So let's make this bend all the way around on itself and curl it into a rolled up cloth. So if we drag the strength all the way back, it locks out at 360 degrees, which is one full loop. But if we click the value here instead of the slider and drag this to the left, we can keep increasing that bend to whatever we want. So let's try negative 2000 degrees which gives us a nice tightly round roll of cloth. But if we take a closer look at this and maybe hide the bend deformer for a second, it's created a bit of a cylindrical shape with the geometry overlapping. But if this was a real piece of cloth, it would spiral inward and give us that rolled up carpet kind of look. So to achieve that, we just need to go to the coordinates tab of our bend deformer and add a slight offset to the 90 degree angle here, which we got by changing the bend angle back here. So let's go back here and just offset the angle by one degree. And you can see that's getting closer to what we want, but let's try offsetting it the other way. And I think that's exactly the way we wanna roll this. So the start of the cloth is touching the ground and we could unroll it along this axis. So let's try and do that. 
if we just frame this up a bit and grab the bend deformer whose axis is over here. If we now move this along in this direction, that's going to unroll our cloth exactly the way we want, like so. But I'll undo that. What I don't really like is the fact that the bend deformer axis is way over here. So just as a bit of housekeeping, let's set up a controller that will allow us to unroll from the base of the roll over here. So I'll add a null object, and I just wanna position that right at the starting point of the roll. So in the side view, I'll just move that into place. And it looks like it's going to be negative 250 centimeters exactly. Then back in the perspective view, I'm going to parent our bend deformer to the null. So we can use that to control the rolling from that position instead. So to the bend deformer, let's add a constraint tag. And we'll set that to parent mode. Then in the target slot here, let's add our null which we could rename to controller. And now we've got a very simple rig where moving the controller will unroll the cloth, which will make animating this nice and easy. So let's do exactly that. We'll put that back at the start. And on the first frame, we can set a keyframe in the Z axis direction. And if you don't want this to start at negative 250 centimeters, we can pop this open and freeze all transformations which locks in that offset and resets the start position to zero, which again is better for clean animation. So we can now keyframe this at the start position. Then if we go ahead to maybe frame 40, we can move the controller along the Z axis until our cloth is fully unrolled about there and set another keyframe. And we've now animated the cloth unrolling. So now we can make this dynamic and interact with the other objects. So let's bring them back and rewind our animation. Let's start by making the cloth roll dynamic. So we'll grab our remesh and add a cloth dynamics tag. So that's dynamic now, but we also need it to interact with the plane and the cylinder. So let's grab the plane first and we'll add a collider tag. And we'll hit play to see what that gives us. And it just collapses to the floor. So it is interacting with the plane, which is good, but we've lost our animation. So we need to find a way to keep our animated unrolling, but also let dynamics influence the cloth as it interacts with the other objects in the scene. And we can do exactly that over in the cloth tag under mix animation. If we activate with force and give the strength a fairly low value, like 20 maybe, let's see what happens now. Okay, we've got our animation back now but it's going straight through the cylinder instead of over it because we'll need to make that a collider as well. So we could just copy the collider tag from our floor plane onto the cylinder, but a better option might be to add a connect, which connects objects together as one. So if we put both objects into the connect, we can just move the collider tag onto that instead. So all objects within the connect will now become colliders. So let's test it out. There was a slight bump in the cloth as it rolled over the cylinder, but we might need to tweak our simulation settings to make this a bit more accurate. So I'll hit Control D on the keyboard to bring up the project settings. And under the simulation tab, we can increase the accuracy of our sim by increasing the sub steps. So let's try bringing this up to 60 and see if that makes any difference. So it did interact with the cylinder slightly better this time, but we might need to tweak the settings a little bit more. Let's try increasing the iterations as well. And that's now working a lot better, but I'm not sure I like the bunching up of the cloth that's happening over here. And I think we can fix that back in the cloth tag if we enable follow shape down here at the bottom of our mix animation settings, which should help our simulations stick to the animation a bit closer. And that's looking better, but the cloth did slip a little bit at the beginning. And if we just watch that again, the roll also seems to collapse in on itself as it hits the cylinder as well. So let's fix that. If we grab our cloth tag again and take a look at the surface tab, our cloth has bendiness enabled by default, which may be why it's not holding its shape when it collides with the cylinder. So if we set this to zero, that should stop that. And then to fix the slipping and sliding, we could try increasing the friction. And we could also have a look at the collider tag where we could decrease bounce and increase the friction here as well. 
and try that. And I think that's done the trick. So let's see how our rig goes with a few more obstacles in the way. Because we set our colliders up inside a connect object, anything that we add in here will automatically collide with our cloth. So let's just make a few copies of our cylinder. And if we play this, the cloth is now rolling over all of those. Although we did get a bit of a glitch on that first one, so we might need to increase the sub steps a bit more. And just to make sure we're getting accurate collisions, let's also increase the collision passes. And we'll give that a go. Perfect. So I'm happy with the animation now. So let's grab our cloth tag again and we'll cache our simulation to disk. So when that's done, we can now play this back in real time. And we're just about done with this effect. You might also like to add a bit of thickness to your cloth before rendering it. So if we grab the remesh, we can add the all new thicken object to this, which is probably a tad too thick. So let's drop that down to one centimeter instead. And another thing I like to do is add a bit of bevel to the cloth so we don't have such a hard edge. So let's add a bevel deformer as well, which we need to put here in the hierarchy. And in the bevel options, let's also make that a lot smaller to give us that slightly beveled edge. And I'll also go to topology and fix the fong angle of the bevel. And that's looking about ready to render, I think. So I'll switch to shaded view and add a simple material to this. Let's give it the red carpet treatment and pop that onto there. And that gives us the final effect. I also did a second example using the stairs operator in the asset browser which lets you create a staircase super easily. Then I made the cloth editable and selected a bunch of points, which I locked in place at the top of the stairs using fix points in the cloth tag. Then I just let gravity do its thing and let the cloth roll down the stairs like so. And that's it for dynamic rolling. There's a link below to where you can grab both setups from our website, as well as the completed render ready scenes that include all the redshift lighting and materials as well. So that's it for now. Happy rendering, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, give it a like so we know what to make next. Or just let us know what you need help with down in the comments. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and click on the bell to be notified when we post new videos just like this one. You can find loads of CG training, assets, and resources on our website, cgshortcuts.com or become a member to access exclusive premium content. That's it for now. Here's a few more videos you might like.